So we have a secondary lens that is in, in the kits, and this is referred to as a, a macro lens. Nikon actually refers to it as a micro lens, but um, that's just a terminology. Um, macro is the more commonly referred to uh, uh, terminology. So if you look at it, it says AF uh, micro, a Nikkor lens, which is the proprietary lens of, of Nikon, uh, just like the variable focal length lens. This one here is preset at 60 millimeter focal length. And again, during lecture, that will be discussed uh, more in depth. Now, for the storage of these lenses, uh, you have a lens cap. It is a, it is a smaller diameter lens than on the, uh, than on the um, uh, variable focal length lens. Uh, the diameter on this lens is 62 millimeters. On the, um, the variable focal length lens, it's 67 millimeters, so it's slightly wider in diameter. Um, so it has the, a lens cap on there, and it also has a cap for the back portion of the lens as well. And now you can see the same type of contacts that the, uh, that the uh, variable focal length lens has. And we just want to make sure that both lens caps are, are in place when the lens is in storage. In subsequent lectures, we will be discussing more about the functionality and we will be using the, um, uh, the macro lens uh, later on. I'm just going to skip ahead. We talked about uh, the flash here. The, the flash units that we use are Nikon brand uh, speed lights. Uh, it has a, uh, an infrared connector here or indicator so it's, when it's synchronized with the the camera operation. Uh, on the back of it, it has uh, an LCD screen uh, that uh, tells you the mode and, and so forth of that. Again, we will talk more about that later on in, in subsequent uh, lectures, but for installation, it has four batteries. They're all uh, AA batteries that go into it, and uh, the batteries are on the right side of the uh, of the, uh, the camera kit. Please make sure that if you are going to be using the flash as part of the exercise that you install the, the batteries properly and likewise when you finish the exercise remove the batteries and reinstall them in their designated cutouts here in the, uh, in the foam. This is just to ensure that no damage is caused to the flash unit should the batteries start to, to leak uh, battery acid. The way this is cut out, it can only uh, set in there one way so, so that the Nikon uh, um, name and the, um, the IR uh, red lens is facing upward. Okay. So uh, mounting the, um, the flash unit onto the, the camera, uh, on the underside of the flash unit is the, the foot, and it, it gets attached to the accessory shoe on top of the camera. Uh, ensuring that the, on the back side of the flash unit that it is in the unlock position, slide the shoe or the foot onto the shoe until it totally engages forward, and then turn the lock position on like such. Now, as we will explain momentarily, you can also extend this, rather than having the flash unit mounted on the camera, you can also incorporate it with a synchronizing cord to give you the adaptability of having the flash separate away from the camera for angle and distance. Uh, next to that, we have what's referred to as a, a sync cord or a synchronization cord. Now, I'm gonna bring the camera back out again here. I, um, I was uh, um, negligent in not uh, mentioning the, the hot shoe or the adapter for the uh, uh, external accessories. And this, uh, this accessory shoe that's on here is designed to accommodate the uh, synchronizing cord. So it's simply just, it has a, a foot on the bottom of it, if you can see that there with a series of contacts on it. And this simply just slides on from the back towards the front of the camera. There is a lock button that's on here, a little turn lock, 
the lock is uh, arrow indicator to the right. You want to make sure that it's on the left. Slide it on so that it clicks fully engaged and then turn it to the lock position. Now this is designed to, to give you an extension so that you can use, for our purposes, it's going to be the external flash. The camera itself has a flash unit that's built into the camera, but for some of our practicals, there is an external unit as well. So on the other end of the synchronizing cord, it has that same type of accessory shoe that is on the top of the camera. And likewise, it has the foot mounted on the flash unit that gets installed again from back uh, to, to forward and, um, and it has a locking um, indicator or a lock mechanism on the back of the, the actual flash unit. So it simply just gets slid on like that. And then for functionality of the camera, you now have an auxiliary flash unit that you can hold at any position depending on what angle and what distance you want that light coming in from. So I'm just going to quickly remove these units here. And we'll carry on with our tour. So setting the camera aside again. So we've talked about the variable focal, or sorry, the uh, the macro lens, the synchronizing cord that that uh, that links the the remote flash to the uh, to the camera. Um, in between where the the uh, macro lens and the flash unit are is another lens hood uh, designed for the uh, macro lens at the 62 uh, millimeter. Uh, lens size. So continuing on in our uh, tour of the camera here, there is another pouch in this little cutout here that has a remote control unit in it to remotely operate the shutter release button or to take photos remotely from the, uh, the actual camera itself. And lastly, I should mention as well, I took the battery out. You can see where the battery cord is next to where the camera is. And lastly, we have this mounting bracket for the tripod unit. And the mounting bracket is designed to affix to the underside of the camera. There is a threaded uh, bolt that, that uh, uh, inserts into the, the uh, female receptacle on the underside of the camera. And it has this turn knob to tighten it on. Now as well, the, there are indicators here as to the directionality of which way is the front and which way uh, is the back of the, of the lens mount. So this can be mounted either uh, on a, uh, just hold the camera up like this here so you can see what I'm looking at. You can see on the underside of the uh, uh, on the mounting bracket, it has lens pointing this way or it has lens pointing this way. So it can be a horizontal or a vertical or portrait and landscape mount. So it either goes this way where the arrow is pointing towards the lens this way or it can be mounted this way where the lens is pointing in that direction there. So for our purposes, screw hole is here to, to mount it. We are going to leave it in the horizontal uh, plane so that it is it is aligned with the same directionality uh, uh, lengthwise on the body of the camera. So just line that up so that the, the lens arrow is pointing towards the lens, snug it down, doesn't, doesn't have to be over tightened to the point that it is gonna potentially warp the camera body, but you want it snug enough that it's not going to come undone. And then you can just uh, reset the, the actual turn knob so that it's not going to be an obstruction when it's mounted onto the, uh, the tripod. So that is the purpose of that mounting bracket is that it will correspond with the, uh, the, the, um, the actual grip mount of the tripod unit which will come to uh, shortly.